Ezekiel Chapter 41 An account was given of the porch of the house in the close of the foregoing chapter, this brings us to the temple itself, the description of which here given creates much difficulty to the critical expositors and occasions differences among them. Those must consult them who are nice in their inquiries into the meaning of the particulars of this delineation, it shall suffice us to observe. 1 The dimensions of the house, the posts of it, verse 1, the door, verse 2, the wall and the side chambers, verse 5, 6, the foundations and wall of the chambers, their doors, verse 8 11, and the house itself, verse 13. 2. The dimensions of the oracle, or most holy place, verse 3, 4. 3. An account of another building over against the separate place, verse 12 15. 4. The manner of the building of the house, verse 7, 16, 17. 5. The ornaments of the house, verse 18 20. 6. The altar of incense and the table, verse 22. 7. The doors between the temple and the oracle, verse 23-26. There is so much difference both in the terms and in the rules of architecture between one age and another, one place and another, that it ought not to be any stumbling block to us that there is so much in these descriptions dark and hard to be understood, about the meaning of which the learned are not agreed. To one not skilled in mathematics the mathematical description of a modern structure would be scarcely intelligible, and yet to a common carpenter or mason among the Jews at that time we may suppose that all this, in the literal sense of it, was easy enough. The Vision of the Temple B.C. 574 One afterward he brought me to the temple, and measured the posts six cubits broad on the one side, and six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. Two and the breadth of the door was ten cubits, and the sides of the door were five cubits on the one side, and five cubits on the other side, and he measured the length thereof, forty cubits, and the breadth, twenty cubits. Three then went he inward and measured the post of the door, two cubits, and the door, six cubits, and the breadth of the door, seven cubits. 4. So he measured the length thereof, twenty cubits, and the breadth, twenty cubits, before the temple, and he said unto me, This is the most holy place. 5. After he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and the breadth of every side chamber, four cubits, round about the house on every side. Six and the side chambers were three, one over another, and thirty in order, and they entered into the wall which was of the house for the side chambers round about, that they might have hold, but they had not hold in the wall of the house. Seven and there was an enlarging, and a winding about still upward to the side chambers, for the winding about of the house went still upward round about the house, therefore the breadth of the house was still upward, and so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the midst. 8 I saw also the height of the house round about, the foundations of the side chambers were a full reed of six great cubits. 9 The thickness of the wall which was for the side chamber without, was five cubits, and that which was left was the place of the side chambers that were within. Ten and between the chambers was the wideness of twenty cubits round about the house on every side. Eleven and the doors of the side chambers were toward the place that was left, one door toward the north, and another door toward the south and the breadth of the place that was left was five cubits round about. We are still attending a prophet that is under the guidance of an angel, 
and therefore attend with reverence, though we are often at a loss to know both what this is and what it is to us. Observe here, 1. After the Prophet had observed the courts he was at length brought to the temple, 5. 1. If we diligently attend to the instructions given us in the plainer parts of religion, and profit by them, we shall be led further into an acquaintance with the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Those that are willing to dwell in God's courts shall at length be brought into his temple. Ezekiel was himself a priest, but by the iniquity and calamity of the times was cut short of his birthright privilege of ministering in the temple, but God makes up the loss to him by introducing him into this prophetical, evangelical, celestial temple, and employing him to transmit a description of it to the church, in which he was dignified above all the rest of his order. 2. When our Lord Jesus spoke of the destroying of this temple, which his hearers understood of this second temple of Jerusalem, he spoke of the temple of his body, John 2. 19, 21, and with good reason might he speak so ambiguously when Ezekiel's vision had a joint respect to them both together, including also his mystical body the church, which is called the house of God, 1 Timothy 3. 15, and all the members of that body, which are living temples, in which the spirit dwells. 3. The very posts of this temple, the doorposts, were as far one from the other, and consequently the door was as wide, as the whole breadth of the tabernacle of Moses verse 1, namely, 12 cubits, Exodus 26, 16, 22, 25. In comparison with what had been under the law we may say, wide is the gate which leads into the church, the ceremonial law that wall of partition which had so much straightened the gate, being taken down. 4. The most holy place was an exact square, twenty cubits each way, 5. 4. For the new Jerusalem is exactly square, reverence 21. 16, denoting its stability, for we look for a city that cannot be moved. 5. The upper stories were larger than the lower, 5, 7. The walls of the temple were 6 cubits thick at the bottom, 5 in the middle story, and 4 in the highest, which gave room to enlarge the chambers the higher they went, but care was taken that the timber might have fast hold, though God builds high, he builds firmly, yet so as not to weaken one part for the strengthening of another they had hold, but not in the wall of the house. By this spreading gradually, the side chambers that were on the height of the house, in the uppermost story of all, were six cubits, whereas the lowest were but four, they gained a cubit every story. The higher we build up ourselves in our most holy faith the more should our hearts, those living temples, be enlarged. The Vision of the Temple. BC 574, 12 Now the building that was before the separate place at the end toward the west was seventy cubits broad, and the wall of the building was five cubits thick round about, and the length thereof ninety cubits. 13 So he measured the house, a hundred cubits long, and the separate place, and the building, with the walls thereof, an hundred cubits long, fourteen also the breadth of the face of the house, and of the separate place toward the east, a hundred cubits. Fifteen and he measured the length of the building over against the separate place which was behind it, and the galleries thereof on the one side and on the other side, a hundred cubits, with the inner temple, and the porches of the court. 16 The door posts, and the narrow windows, and the galleries round about on their three stories, over against the door, keeled with wood round about, and from the ground up to the windows, and the windows were covered, 
17 to that above the door, even unto the inner house, and without. And by all the wall round about within and without, by measure. 18 And it was made with cherubims and palm trees, so that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub, and every cherub had two faces, 19 So that the face of a man was toward the palm tree on the one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side, it was made through all the house round about. 20 From the ground unto above the door were cherubims and palm trees made, and on the wall of the temple. 21 The posts of the temple were squared, and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one is the appearance of the other. 22 The altar of wood was three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits, and the corners thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof, were of wood, and he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord. 23 And the temple and the sanctuary had two doors. 24 And the doors had two leaves apiece, two turning leaves, two leaves for the one door, and two leaves for the other door. 25 And there were made on them, on the doors of the temple, cherubims and palm trees, like as were made upon the walls, and there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. 26 And there were narrow windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other side, on the sides of the porch, and upon the side chambers of the house, and thick planks. Here is, 1. An account of a building that was before the separate place, that is, before the temple, at the end towards the west verse 12, which is here measured, and compared verse 13 with the measure of the house, and appears to be of equal dimensions with it. This stood in a court by itself, which is measured verse 15, and its galleries, or chambers belonging to it, its posts and windows, and the ornaments of them, 5. 15 17. But what use was to be made of this other building we are not told, perhaps, in this vision. It signified the setting up of a church among the Gentiles not inferior to the Jewish temple, but of quite another nature, and which should soon supersede it. 2. A description of the ornaments of the temple, and the other building. The walls on the inside from top to bottom were adorned with cherubim and palm trees, placed alternately, as in Solomon's temple, 1 Kings. 6. 29. Each cherub is here said to have two faces, the face of a man towards the palm tree on one side and the face of a young lion towards the palm tree on the other side. 5. 19. These seem to represent the angels, who have more than the wisdom of a man and the courage of a lion and in both they have an eye to the palms of victory and triumph which are set before them, and which they are sure of in all their conflicts with the powers of darkness. And in the assemblies of the saints angels are in a special manner present, 1 Corinthians 11, 10, 3. A description of the posts of the doors both of the temple and of the sanctuary, they were squared verse 21 not round like pillars, and the appearance of the one was as the appearance of the other. In the tabernacle, and in Solomon's temple, the door of the sanctuary, almost holy, was narrower than that of the temple, but here it was fully as broad, for in gospel times the way into the holiest of all is made more manifest than it was under the Old Testament, Hebrews 9, 8, and therefore the door is wider. These doors are described, 5. 23, 24. The temple and the sanctuary had each of them its door, and they were two leaved, folding doors. 4. We have here the description of the altar of incense, here said to be an altar of wood, 5. 22. 
no mention is made of its being overlaid with gold, but surely it was intended to be so, else it would not bear the fire with which the incense was to be burned, unless we will suppose that it served only to put the censers upon or else it intimates that the incense to be offered in the gospel temple shall be purely spiritual, and the fire spiritual, which will not consume an altar of wood. Therefore this altar is called a table. This is the table that is before the Lord. Here, as before, we find the altar turned into a table, for, the great sacrifice being now offered, that which we have to do is to feast upon the sacrifice at the Lord's table. 5. Here is the adorning of the doors and windows with palm trees, that they might be of a piece with the walls of the house. 5. 25, 26. Thus the living temples are adorned, not with gold, or silver, or costly array, but with the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible.